Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Ryan. So excited to dive into these bottles today. They were sent in by a couple of our Patreon members, uh, Eric and Dan Thrice. Appreciate you gentlemen. Uh, anybody from our Discord community and Patreon community who helps support the channel by sending in samples, full bottles, all that stuff, you guys are the reason this channel can continue to pump out the content that it does. You know, I'm Ryan. I'm the guy that makes the videos here on DramGuard, but DramGuard is a collection. We're a, we're a community of bourbon and whiskey enthusiasts and lovers of all different kinds and stages in our whiskey journeys. We have an awesome some discord community you're welcome to be a part of it the link is in the description but this channel is basically a collection of my shelves as well as the shelves of all these other whiskey enthusiasts all across the united states picking up bottles um and and we get to share them together and we do a lot of events and, and uh pictures and stuff like that in the discord together so get involved uh so all that to say hey thanks so much guys appreciate you for sending these in because i can't have every bottle on my shelves that gets really expensive so <laughs> i appreciate that we can share together and and grow together but let's dive into these bottles today so what we have is a couple of very, uh, I guess, high-profile barrel craft spirits uh, bottles here. So we've got the uh, limited-release Mizanara, uh, Mizanara, Mizanara, right? Uh, cask finish uh, bourbon coming out of barrel craft spirits this year. This was um, it was a spring release. I think it was a late spring release, but a lot of people are just now starting to get their bottles. You know, you, whether you, uh, depending on where you ordered it from. So this was a really high profile bottle. I can't wait to dive into that as well. And I'll uh, talk a bit about what Mizanar is and what makes that bottle special in just a moment. And the second one is actually the uh, Barrel Infinite. And uh, this one Tate got to be involved in, uh, this, this most recent uh, edition of the Barrel Infinite bottle. What's crazy about this bottle is that it's, it's a blend of a ton of things. The youngest stuff in there is 17 year old Tennessee whiskey and 17 year old bourbon. The oldest stuff in there is 22 year old Scotch whiskey and 24 year old Canadian. I'm interested because on paper, I'm like, is that even gonna work? Like I, I, I'm a little bit, I have a, a, some trepidation about this. I don't, I don't know what to expect from it, but we'll see. A barrel is known as being master blender. So we'll see what they're able to do with all those different barrels from across the world in this specific edition of the Barrel Infinite bottle. But let's start off here with the Mizanara. So if you're not familiar, familiar with Mizanara, so it's, it's one of the most rare a species of oak on the planet. It is Japanese oak, and Japan has very strict laws about how much you're allowed to harvest, how old it has to be when it's harvested. So for example, if memory serves, all Mizanara oak that is harvested and used in barrels is at least, I think it's 200 years old, and at most around 500 years old. So we could very well be drinking whiskey that was aged in oak itself that is older than the United States of America, older than the invention of the light bulb. It's wild to think about that, isn't it? You know, whiskey is a craft of patience. The best whiskeys have a lot of time as one of the core ingredients, you know what I mean? So the fact that even now we're looking at the cooperage itself, the barrel, how old is the oak, and it could be two to 500 years old, that's insane. And because of that, Mizanara oak is extremely expensive too. So the average Mizanara oak barrel itself costs 10 times the amount of money a standard white American oak uh, would cost to make. So barrel has had to invest a lot in order to get this product out there. But what's impressive is that it's not even a hundred bucks. This is a $90 bottle, which I think is actually pretty impressive that they were able to keep a Mizanara finished product under a hundred bucks. The ages on the whiskeys in this blend, uh, six, seven, eight, nine years old and 14. So I don't know what the ratios are, but I know that the mash bill then collectively as a blend comes out to be 76% um, corn, 20% rye and 4% malted barley. Well, that's enough talk. Let's get in on this, yeah? Ooh, the nose jumps out with a lot of citrus, like orange peel and sweet caramel candies. The nose makes me think of, um, I know this is really obscure and, and maybe a little too specific. Makes me think of walking into a Tommy Bahama. My dad was a Tommy Bahama guy when I was growing up, right? Took a lot of vacations down on the Gulf Coast of Florida, Sarasota, Siesta Key area. Spent a lot of time there. And of course, my, all of my dad's vacation attire came from Tommy Bahama. You know, you walk in there and it just smells like wood and cigars and sandalwood. You know what I mean? It's a, that kind of a vibe on the nose of this. It's super rich. I should note that the proof point on this is 115.52. Very robust and rich on the nose. I like that. Citrusy, sweet, and lots of wood and leather notes as well. I'm digging it. Let's try it. Cheers. Man, that is 
hacking. Okay, admittedly, first sip of the day. But holy cow, this is super rich. A lot of tannic peppery oak right up front. And then the, a lot of times you get those leather and tobacco notes kind of late into the mid palate and then on into the finish. No, I get it right up front here. And then after that's when that citrus comes around. And I think of like uh, oranges and cream. Yeah, dry, peppery, leathery up front. And then the sweet citrus and then the finish is a whole lot of like brown sugary oak. Then that creamy nature kind of settles in, that whipped cream kind of a sweetness alongside the citrus, the rind of the orange peel. Man, the longer the finish just rides out, the sweeter it gets. It's a really interesting inverse as to what I often get on a lot of bourbons where it's really sweet up front and then the oak and the pepperiness kind of comes around towards the tail end. This is sort of the, the opposite where I'm getting those dark rich notes, the leathers, the tobaccos, uh, the tobacco leaf right up front, right? And then after that, it gets the sweet and the citrus, but the oak is definitely pronounced throughout the entire thing, which is great because if it's gonna be a Mizanara finished product, I want the Mizanara to really shine through and to be the star of the show. And it is ever present throughout the entire sip. I'm not like a huge Barrel Craft Spirits fan. I will be upfront about that. I find a lot of their bottles to be extremely hit or miss. And the problem with that is a lot of times their bottles are a hundred bucks or more. So when they miss, I'm out a fair amount of cash and I don't care for that. I will say though that this is probably one of the best pours I've ever had from Barrel Craft Spirits. This is delicious. I like that a lot. Ooh, man, was that good though. Let's move on to the infinite bottle. So cool that Tate got to be involved in this one. Take over there from uh, r slash bourbon, the Reddit. Got a great community over there. Let's get in here. The nose reminds me of a lot of four gate blends. It's kind of hard to dial in the nose on this one. There's no Kentucky bourbon whatsoever in this blend. There's Indiana bourbon, Tennessee whiskey, a few different Canadians, and one scotch. So it's an interesting hodgepodge here. The nose gives me a lot of uh, mellowed rye notes, like rye that just kind of mellowed out for a long time. And it's the kind of rye that I've come to associate with, with mostly Canadian rye whiskey where it's not aged in virgin oak casks all the time it's it's a little bit softer around the edges very approachable there's a little bit of a plum note to it on the nose it's really fruity but a, a very sweet mellow fruit kind of like a plum a little bit of fresh cut grass as well on the nose and there's almost a salty characteristic to it as well like a briny note to it very interesting Couple things to note about this one. This one is a little bit higher proof. It comes in at 121 proof, I think. And the price tag on this was $130 to get into this bottle, 130 bucks. And that's kind of what I said about, about barrel in general, is that if you're gonna be rolling the dice on a, a, a bottle of theirs, usually you're spending a, a hundred bucks or more. And this is no different in that regard. Okay, let's get in here and try it, shall we? Cheers. I think of honey and rye chips in a Chex mix. You think of like brand cereal that you drizzled some honey over top of it. It's a lot like that. Like a brand cereal that has those dried cranberries, the craisins in it. That's all, man, that's really what I think of tasting this. Honey, bitter rye chips, brand cereal, and some dried red fruits like cranberry. I just don't know what the identity of this bottle is. You know what I mean? If the goal was to really just blend a few different worlds of whiskey together, I think maybe they've accomplished a little bit of that. Some of that briny nature on the nose could be from the scotch, but I don't taste a lot of scotch whiskey influence on the palate itself. It mostly, to me, tastes like Canadian rye whiskey with a little bit of that Lincoln County process charcoal-y sort of a note on the tail end of the palate and into the finish. I don't think it's bad by any stretch, but... It also doesn't give me a clear sense of here's who I am and what I'm trying to accomplish. It leaves me with, uh, I guess, more questions than answers. It's not unenjoyable. It doesn't taste bad. Huh. Okay. Let me go ahead and give these things a score per my scale. And this is where some of it is definitely a little bit uh, subjective to what you like, what you're attracted to, what you enjoy. If you really love like Canadian blends, like for the four gate stuff and the options out there in that regard, you might really like the infinite. Personally, I do tend to, to gravitate towards a lot of darker, deeper, richer notes. I like a lot of bourbon. I like bourbon that brings some of those uh, leather and tobacco notes forward, especially. I like a lot of wood influence. So for me, I think the Mizanaro would be my preference of these two. Uh, by quite a bit. But again, that's entirely up to you and your palate and what you enjoy. You know, we, even within our Discord, we have people who were, there's an interesting question that was posed recently, which was like, what's your most disappointing bottle of 2024 so far? 
And uh, I had shared that mine was the Screaming Titan. I said I love a lot of the small lot series from Redwood Empire. Devil's uh, Devil's uh, Tower was one of my favorites, but the Screaming Titan was a huge disappointment to me, the weeded one. And there were people in the Discord who was like, I'm the opposite. Hated Devil's Tower. Absolutely adored Screaming Titan. So it really just depends on your palette. This is just the way it is. For me and my palette, though, I think for the Mizanara, I would give that one a score of 8.2 because I think that is it is fantastic whiskey. I think 8.2 is very fair in that regard. Great price point, only $90. I think if you ever see it on a shelf, you got to buy it, right? It's, it's in the firmly in the got to buy category for me. I think that uh, 6.9 would be how I would rate the Infinite Bottle, um, which isn't bad. I, 6.9 is the very high end uh, on my scale for uh, the top end of decent to good. So it's good on the top end there. It's good. And it's strongly in the maybe buy category. I think that it would be something that depends on your palate and what you enjoy. Maybe buy it if you uh, really believe in barrel craft spirits and that's uh, something that you really enjoy. Maybe buy it if that's barking up your tree and you're willing to spend that money on it because you're a little bit more familiar with that profile and you know you enjoy it. Hey, go ahead, maybe buy it. But for me, I, I don't think that I would personally pick that bottle up for 130 bucks. I think there's other things for 130 bucks that I would be more um, inclined to go after myself. So that's where I land with these. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for sharing them with me. I really appreciate each and every one of you. Hey, uh, Patreon members, we're about to do another bottle share. We're uh, right now kind of in the planning stages for our next bottle share, so we should have more information on that very soon. Uh, this one's going to be focused on craft distilleries that are local to you. So everybody in the bottle share is going to submit uh, you know, whiskey that is local to them, whether it's good or bad, we're just going to explore some craft distilleries out there together. You know, we a lot, a lot of times we're sharing some really cool top shelf pours with each other. This time we're gonna do something a little bit different. Let's just see if there's any fun craft distilleries out there that are flying under the radar. We can try a bunch of stuff together collectively and have a good time with it. So again, it's probably gonna have to be split up between several nights because last time we had so many people involved that there was no way we could do all of the samples in one night together because uh, you know we, we wouldn't be able to function the next day and you wouldn't be able to taste most of the whiskeys. So we broke it up into different nights, different installments. We all got together. We had the uh, list of samples that we were gonna go through that day. We tried, uh, usually it was like four of them on the docket each night, and we just hung out for a while, tasting them, talking about it. We'll do that again, and this time craft distilleries will be the uh, the theme. If you're not a member of our Patreon, uh, we have that base tier, which is just a dollar uh, a month, very, very base level, just to get access to the, the, the Patreon page. But I think what we're probably going to do is if you're in that $5 tier and above, you're going to have access to the bottle share this time around. So, uh that's that's the plan, just to keep it a little more contained, right? A little more contained. But thank you so much for tuning into the video today. If you enjoyed it, then let me know by leaving a like on the videos. That's the best free way to support the content right here on YouTube. And consider subscribing for additional whiskey content. Cheers, my friends. May you live richly and get better with age. And I hope to catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.